Now, there are a couple things that people are saying to you that have gotten you upset in the past. You told me in our first call, but can you tell me again, what are some of the words or some of the things that they do to you? Um, they call me rude names. Yeah, like and what? Like the M word. Sometimes they swear at me. Okay. And, um, Sometimes they call me, you're short and you have a big head and um, you're not coming on my team because you look so tiny and they think I'm not very good at the game. And when they call you the M word, I, I guess you mean midget, is that right? Is that the M word? Yeah. When they call you that name and they swear at you, they call you short and say you have a big head and they don't pick you for their team and they say you're no good at the game, what are the feelings you have inside? Um, they make me angry. They also make me sad and get upset. At this point in my conversation, I share with Quaid in a tool I created called the emoji meter. It introduces him visually to how he can change his feelings by changing his thinking. You know, he told me he's angry and sad when people tease him, and that tells me that he has built up expectations for himself that are not being met. And so my goal is to help rid himself of those demands and even those desires, ultimately to become indifferent to the teasing, and better yet, to look forward to being teased like comedians do when they are roasted. I'm gonna show you a little, kind of a picture of what, what, what this might look like. Mad is on the left. Sad is with the one with tears. Meh is kind of like, whatever, I don't care. And then glad is with the thumbs up. Do you see those pictures? Yeah. And so when they call you a midget or they swear at you or they make fun of your height, you said, are you in the red, the orange, the yellow, the, or the green? The red. Ooh. Well, can I tell you why you're that way? Do you see his fists, how clenched they are? Yeah. He's probably saying something like, you better not be rude. You better not be mean to me. You have no right to call me that name. You see how demanding he is? Yeah. And when we have demands, we get disturbed. We get angry. Now, if you didn't have those thoughts and you just had, let's say, like towards the yellow or orange, you said, please don't call me the M word. Please, please, please don't call me that M word. Then you would just be sad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, imagine if you had kind of like the guy, the third guy, where his hands are like, I don't care. You see that guy? <laughs> what do you think he's saying? I don't care. You can just call me that name, whatever. That's right. And now he's not going to be mad. He's not going to be sad. He's just going to be kind of whatever. He's not going to be affected. What do you think the guy in the green is thinking? Happy. That's right. Have you ever heard anyone call themselves a name or make fun of themselves? Um, I think so, yeah. Now, do you know Brad Williams? Yeah. Now, I notice that he makes fun of his height quite a bit. Have you ever seen him make jokes about himself? Yeah. What would you do? You found out your child was a little bit different. He wasn't gonna be like all the other kids. What would you do? How would you react if you knew for a fact your son was guaranteed to be bullied when he got to school. Hopefully, you do what my dad did. He bullied me first. <laughs> but he did it in a very awesome way. He would make fun of me, and he would tell me like, all right, hit me back. Hit me back with something. That's what you're gonna do. Some kid's gonna come up to you. He's gonna make fun of you. What are you gonna do? You gonna cry about it? No, not my son. So he molded me. He trained me. He prepared me like Yoda and Luke Skywalker. <laughs> the sizes were reversed, but you get the idea. He's showing that when people call him names or they make fun of him or they point out his height, he has such a strong sense of humor 
he can take a joke about himself and he could even make a joke about himself. But if he had this thought, if he thought, you better not make fun of me, you better not, he wouldn't be able to be laughing about himself. If he thought, please, please, please don't make fun of me, then he'd be crying all the time when people make fun of himself. But he has made a career out of not only letting people make jokes about him, but joking about himself. And that shows a sign of incredible emotional strength. And that's the goal. At this point, I'm challenging Quaden to give up his demands and, and his desires. And I'm really getting to the heart of his issue. You know, he may not realize this, but I'm actually chipping away at his deepest held irrational demands and his desperate desire to be tall. I know that if I can help him reach unconditional self-acceptance, embracing who he is and how he is, then he will be cured from his insecurities about having dwarfism. I, I know that what I'm asking him to do is difficult, especially since I, I'm aware he's been in denial about his dwarfism since his earliest years. I don't have dwarfism. It means you're small and you don't grow. But that's okay. No! I don't have dwarfism. Mummy can't lie to you. That's not fair if I say, okay, then you don't have dwarfism. You do have dwarfism, and that's deadly. No! It doesn't I don't have dwarfism. You know, in my communication with Yerika, Quaden's mom, she admits that most likely Quaden inherited his denial from her uh, during the early years of Quaden's life. Well, I think that was part my fault because I was in denial for the first two years. I didn't accept it. Um, I didn't anyone that spoke about it or said those words. So he took on my um, attitude about it unknowingly. So it's like it was ingrained in him. And yeah, I can just see how that has affected his whole outlook because that was my um, ill-informed, you know, like I had no knowledge about it. And it was scary because the doctors were telling me all the worst case scenarios. And I honestly thought it, you know, he was on his deathbed. I thought it was just a curse. And um, yeah, it was really horrible to see my negative judgments be passed on to him. And then he's, you know, it's like self-inflicted and it's looking back on it now, it's, I can see it so clearly, but at the time I just had no idea. It almost killed me. It, it almost took my life. It was very dark days, those first two years of his life. And I guess that's what we're trying to heal now. I'm trying yeah. to undo yeah. those, even up to now, up to this day, I'm just looking back over it, just seeing how I could have handled it so much better. My assessment is that he's slowly accepting it. Um, yeah. He's a lot better than he was. To help Quaden give up his demands and even desires to be different, I have to take him down a logical pathway. I need to teach him and his mom three important questions to help him move across the emoji meter and ultimately embrace his dwarfism for good. Are you okay being your size? Well, well kind of. I don't really care, but I wish I could be taller. How could your condition have been worse? Now, if I remember correctly, one of your surgeries, if it would have gone wrong, you wouldn't have use of your legs, right? You would have been kind of paralyzed, right? Yeah. But they did a pretty good job with that surgery, so you were able to run around. And walk. And walk. Are you thankful for your ability to run and walk? Yeah. Me too. That's kind of one of the things that we have to focus on. You know what? I'm... I would like to be taller, but it could be worse. At least I can walk. At least I can run. I'm thankful for the movement and for the great doctors that have helped me and my mom who's advocated for me. When we focus on the things you know, that, that we're blessed with, we feel less bad about it. Here's question number two. Why won't being this size bother you forever? Do you think it's going to bother you forever? I should ask it that way. 
Well, I wish I could stay a kid and not just grow up and be a grown up. I wonder if being small will help you stay youthful and young. Do you think that'll, that'll help you as you get older? Being smaller will help you feel young? Yeah. Yeah. So here's my third question. How could this small stature of yours, the fact that you have dwarfism, how could this turn out for your good? How could this be beneficial for you? Well, the good thing is that I can, like, still run around and play sports and dress myself, turn on the shower and wash my body and do my hair. Yes, that is good. Now, doesn't this make you unique? You are an Aboriginal and you have dwarfism. Doesn't that make you one of the most unique people on the entire planet? Doesn't that make you special? Yeah. At this point, Quaden is genuinely convinced that there are benefits to his small stature. You can see it in his eyes. He has a genuine belief that he is special and that his life has purpose just the way it is. Now, his mother will need to continue to walk him down this pathway of logic daily. His disability could have been worse. That's the first one. It's not going to bother him in the future. That's the second one. And it will actually turn out for his good. That's the third pattern of logic. Now, the more fluent he becomes with that pattern, the quicker he will be able to talk himself off the ledge of irrationality. And also reinforcing the stages of emotion will be critical for him to take control of that thinking, feeling connection. Let's go back to that diagram real quick. The diagram in the red, it says, you better not call me the M word. Well, he's going to be angry when people do. The one with tears says, please don't call me the M word. Well, he's going to be sad when they do. The other person says, I don't care if you call me the M word. He's not going to care at all. But the other guy says, I hope you call me the N word, man. You can call me the M word if you want. It just reminds me of my purpose and my uniqueness in life. I'm thankful for who I am. I'm thankful for where I come from. You know, Quaden, I think one day soon you are gonna view your life as a gift. And if you could have your life to do over, all over again, you would say, I wouldn't change a thing. You're a real big hero to everyone. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes, I'm so proud of you.